Hi, in this video I'll show you how to write a characterization. Let's go. So, what information should your characterization include? We've got a photo here, let's say this is John, um, and your characterization should describe, for example, what he's like. So, I call this the what. What is the character like? What does he look like? He's got dark hair, he's got a beard. What is his character like? So he seems to be a friendly, easygoing person. But your characterization should also include what I like to call the how. How does the author create this impression? Here, of course, I was going by a photo. So I got this information from the photo, but the author only has words. How does the author use words to create this impression? And depending on what task exactly you have, you're focusing more on one or more on the other. And this, they often, of course, have to do with each other. So you find out what the character is like by looking at or by using the things the author has used and has used to create this impression. Your first step should therefore be to decode the task. So look at the task closely to see what exactly are you looking supposed to be looking for and is it more focused on the what or more focused on the how. Let's look at an example here. If you only have characterized John, I would say the focus is more on what is he like. If you have characterized John and describe his relationship to Susan, it's also on what, but a specific focus within the what is his relationship. Now, if you've got a task like analyze how the author portrays John, I would say the how, and we can see it from this task, also plays a bigger role. How has the author created this impression? So I would say maybe roughly 50-50, looking at both. If you have a task that looks like this, analyze how John's character is presented by means of language and narrative techniques, it becomes much more analytical, much more focused on the how, but you wouldn't completely neglect the what either. Right, so it's important to know your task, to know what exactly are you supposed to be doing before you start. And in a second step, you should gather information. And just to give you some ideas of what you could be looking for in a given text, you can look at how is the outward appearance of the person described. What's his or her behavior? What language is used by the character, but also by other characters or the narrator? What, is, what kind of relationships does this person have? What's the social background? What are general character traits, so things this person consistently seems to be like, and what is his or her current mood, so in the situation, in the paragraph you're describing, on the text you're describing. You should also think about direct characterization versus indirect, and I'll go into that later on. Direct characterization means the author gives you adjectives about the character directly. So we have a sentence like, he was sad. So we know he is sad, unhappy, uh, depressed or whatever, but we know this is something about his character. And here, this is given by the narrator. It could also be another character saying this. Tom is so annoying, Susan said. Tom might not be annoying, it might be Susan's perspective, but we've got this adjective that we can work with. And in a way, indirect characterization is more tricky because you do not get this information to start with. You have to arrive at it yourself. Um, so you must judge or interpret the actions, the language, etc. of the character to arrive at a conclusion. And this can be tricky. Uh, I've got some examples here to show this. Let's say you've got a sentence like, there were tears in, her, in his eyes. He could be sad, that was, this would be the first thing that comes to mind, but there are also tears of joy, so the person could also be happy. And you have to look at the, uh, the context in the text to find out what is meant here. The person could also be just uh, cutting onions in his kitchen and then maybe there would also be tears in his eyes and it wouldn't be so interesting in terms of uh, character. Uh, or another sentence, he cast his eyes down. Why does he cast his eyes down? Is he maybe ashamed? Um, is he shy? Is he feeling guilty about something? And all of this you can only get from the context. In a third step, you would start to write. You would start writing an introduction or a transition depending. So what I mean is this, um, if you're only writing a characterization, you would need an introductory sentence or paragraph. But if in an exam you have had a summary before, 
then you would write a sentence that only starts your characterization part of this complete text. So this is what I like to call a transition to make the difference clear. Um, in there, you would name the most striking characteristic of the character. So the what, and you can use adjectives for that, but you could also use nouns. Could be something like this. John is a shy and insecure character who, and so on. Or John has an inner conflict, and then you describe this inner conflict. Um, if the task requires it to look at the how, as I said above, so more of an analytical focus on how has the author created this character, you should refer to that. So for example, if it's said, how does the um, author do it, you could say he uses indirect characterization. Or when it asks um, what kind of role does the narrative perspective play, you could say uh, by using a third nar person narrative perspective, the author, etc. Say the task we're given is analyze how the author portrays John. So this would mean focus on the what and the how. In this excerpt, the author portrays John as an insecure young man using both direct and indirect characterization. When you write the main part, this is pretty similar in any kind of analytical text, but let me just go through it uh, with you quickly. You would use paragraphs. I would say if it's, this is an exam situation, normally three to five paragraphs, but of course depends on the scope of the text you've, you, you have been given, etc on the time you have. Um, you would order the paragraphs so that they go from general, so more general information about the per person to very specific things. And likewise, from like uh, things you could see on the outside to things that are more part of the person's character. And each of these paragraphs should have the following information. You would name the character trait. So John is aggressive or John is uh, funny or whatever. Um, and then you should have a reference to the text to give proof for what you've just said. And you should explain how you arrive at this conclusion because of some actions. And you really need this if it's indirect characterization. So if from what somebody did or does in the text, you can come to a conclusion about what this person is like. Let me give you an example for a paragraph like this. When John meets Sarah, we realize how shy and awkward he is around girls. He stutters when he speaks to her confer line eight, which shows how difficult it is for him to talk to a girl. Furthermore, the fact that he cannot meet her gaze implies that he has no experience in talking to girls or socializing in general. You see, I marked in the colors here, purple is uh, the main finding, the adjectives you have inferred about this character. The quotes and references are in yellow and the explanation of the quotes on and your findings, the connection between them is in green. You should also have a conclusion and um, my advice is to make the conclusion relatively short. It should not be a long text um, and it should not simply repeat what you've already written in the introduction, but it should rather um, refer back to the task as also the introduction does admittedly, but sum up what you found out about this person on a more abstract level. So don't use the exact terms you had um, in the beginning, but uh, use terms that show that you've considered a number of aspects. It's hard to um, describe this without an example, so let me give you an example here. In conclusion, the author presents John as an extremely anxious character. So this is the main character trait, I would uh, say, in conclusion of all the things I've talked about him I would give. He uses detailed descriptions of John's interactions with his classmates to portray him indirectly. So yes, the author uses both direct and indirect uh, characterization, but to describe him indirectly, um, he uses these interactions with his classmates as an example. What are common problems when people write characterizations? Where do they fail? Well, first of all, um, some people simply have not got enough adjectives to describe people. They can only say, well, he's a really uh, bad person because that's that, or he is really good, etc. But this doesn't really get to what this person is like. So you need good and detailed adjectives like, I don't know, jealous, um, aggressive, um, extrovert, etc. If you don't have these available, you, your characterization can never be uh, very good. So you really need to prepare and practice adjectives. Another common mistake is that people only describe the actions of a character 
without interpreting them. It's okay if you describe a little bit of that to show, to explain um, your, your interpretation. But if you just say, uh, John walks up to the girl, then he talks to her, um, he looks down, then he walks away. We get no information of what is John like now. You need to say this, you need to actually uh, describe him. So not only the actions, but adjectives or nouns that describe what the person is like. And one of the biggest mistakes is not giving proof, not giving evidence from the text. You need some quotes or references that uh, show you're not just making this up, but you're actually using um, something from the text to come up with your interpretations. I hope that helps a little bit in how to write a characterization and you feel better about this now. And um, if you need more information on English, take a look around on my channel. There are many more videos on similar topics. I hope to see you soon here and have a good one. Goodbye.